Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your Manchester United versus Sevilla Europa League preview, but also some breaking news about a new signing for Manchester United. And that is why I'm a few minutes late. I was ready to go live at 7 o'clock and this story around Philip Stefanovic breaks and you've got some people saying there's no truth in it and then Fabrizio Romano comes out and says that there is some truth in it. So I had to go and sort of do a little bit of digging on it because... To be honest with you, I thought it was just going to be a bit of a news story that we could discuss and see what's going to happen with it. Uh, Andy Mitten, obviously, somebody who people will know about, um, you know, uh, good links in with the club. He came out and said there's nothing in it, mate, when it first broke. Um, but Fabrizio Romano has been asked um, that, well, basically, Fabrizio Romano confirmed on Twitter that, 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 that Inter Milan had done a deal. And in the replies, the United camp said, is this a done deal? for Filip Stevanovic and uh, Fabrizio Romano and said yes. Now, the only thing that I would say with any concern is has Fabrizio Romano looked at the image of the uh, the United account when they're talking about Filip Stevanovic or does he think they're talking about Inter? But it's very clear. And I don't think Fabrizio and Arno, you don't look at a tweet and just go, yes, pal, do you? You'd look at the image. Maybe, look, that, that's the only confusion I can think with this. So um, who is he? Uh, and I want to get into the Europa League preview and I want to talk about a bit about some of the other transfer stuff that's breaking. But Filip Filip Savanovic, you may have heard of him. Partizan Belgrade, we played them twice. Um, 17 years of age, the next Ronaldo. Manchester United have apparently agreed a 10 million euro deal and he will go back to Partizan Belgrade on loan next season. So look, he's a kid. He's a youngster. It's another signing of a young player that Manchester United have been doing a lot of these things. But you know what? I mean, look, I'm not going to get overly excited about it. I think the excitement, exciting bit was that it came out as a story two hours ago. You had credible people coming out and saying it's not true. And then you had Fabrizio Romano saying it is true. So we'll see how it develops. But look, he's a winger. He's the next Ronaldo. He's going back on loan. He could be a really good player. It could be a it could be a whole, you know, remember we played a friendly against Sporting Lisbon. We were impressed by Ronaldo and we bought him. Uh, maybe they were impressed by this partisan Belgrade lad and they bought him as well. We'll just wait and see what happens with it. But look, it appears that it is true in relation to what Fabrizio Romano has said. It's not a signing for now. It's not. A, he's going to go on loan next season back to the club we buy him for. But look, that, that's the sort of breaking news that kept us al uh, alive uh, a little bit, uh, um, a little bit late. But look, we'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, let's get on. I'm going to talk a little bit more transfer news a little bit later in the show. Uh, there are some updates around Sanjo, of course. But let's get into the preview. It's Manchester United against Sevilla on Sunday night, and this is a massive game. And even if you just want to talk about transfers, it's a massive game because getting through to the final and winning the final will give us more money. More money that we can potentially spend. So look, it is a very, very big deal on Sunday. And I'm going to say this, you know, I'm going to come out and this say, say this in a very confident way. Manchester United will beat Sevilla and Manchester United will beat Sevilla comfortably. This is the side that Mourinho, basically, it was the beginning of the end, wasn't it? His 12-minute football heritage chat after we got knocked out um, back at Old Trafford a few years ago. But I don't think Sevilla are even as good as they were then. Their two best players are Ocampos, who's a winger, and Benega, who's well into his 30s now. They like to keep hold of the ball, but I think they're toothless up front. I thought against Wolves, the goal they scored was preventable. They had loads of the ball. They didn't create loads of chances. And I think if Wolves had scored that penalty, they probably would have seen them out 1-0. What United need to do in this game is defend well, but you move the ball quickly from back to front. Our front three of Greenwood, Martial and Rashford, with Bruno with them, I think we can really hurt them. I watched that Sevilla game against Wolves. It was ridiculously boring at times, but they leave so much space at the back. They, they're a very spacious team. They're very confident on the ball. They're probably going to have more of the ball. But they are, they are a team that if you win the ball back, you can move it quickly. And they stick to their principles, Sevilla. Now, look, Sevilla finished in the top four in, the, in, in La Liga. They're, no, they're, no, they're not a bad side. But I don't think... I think Manchester United are set up to beat them. And I think, I think Wolves could have beat them, but they went too defensive. We don't need to play a back five. I think the Wolves' blueprint was a bad idea. They're not actually that good up front. So don't lose a defender in a back five. By all means, I think we'll have to play a little bit deeper and hit them on the break. But I wouldn't lose a, strike, a forward to play a back five against them. They're not that potent up front. They haven't got a star player up front. They don't create many chances. And, then, and, you know, if you if anyone can actually remember when we played Sevilla a couple of times uh, that time, in the, in the game over in Sevilla, they did dominate us. They did create chances. And in the game at Old Trafford, they did dominate us. But they, they, they miss a lot of chances. They're not a team that's clinical. Watch them go and beat us 3-0 now. But they're not. 
but they're good on the ball and they will dictate the ball. So United have got to play clever. And we're well used to this. We're well used to this. Whether we like it or not, Chelsea, Man City, we're very good at playing against teams who have a lot of the ball. And Chelsea and Man City are far more potent than Sevilla are. And I think they're better defensively. So United, we can really get at them. And look, Rashford, Martial, Greenwood, key players in this game. We need them to turn up big time. And um, But look, I don't want to disrespect Sevilla. They've won, I think they've done something stupid, like over the last 15 years, they've entered the Europa League 10 times and they've won it five times. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's ridiculous. So that they're a big threat, but this is a trophy we can win. We want that final against Inter Milan, and I think it's there for us to do. I think we're going to win it, and I think we will win it 2 or 3 nil. I really do think that, um, that we... That, and look, there's a very good comment there from Kaplan talking about Ben Yedder. He doesn't play there anymore. They've had some really good strikers over the years. They haven't got that quality of striker anymore. You know, Ocon passes off. He plays off the wing. Benega is a very good player. But, we've, you know, we've got Matic. We've got Pogba. We've got Bruno. We've got that front three. That six has got to play. Let Matic patrol in front of the back four. Pogba can help him out. Pogba with these long-ranging passes to break the lines. And I'd be telling Rashford and Greenwood to hit, hit the flanks. And Martial, spin and get in behind. It, that's what we've got to do against them. Because we can score against them. I don't think they're going to score many against us. So I, I'm confident that we can win it. Uh, I can see a Pogba masterclass in coming, says Callum, one, two, three. Why are you so confident, says Zach? Look, I don't think we played particularly well against Copenhagen, but I just think that Manchester United, this sort of game probably suits us. And for me, it's, 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 it's you know, I know we said this against Leicester a few weeks ago, and we said it straight after lockdown against Spurs. But this, you know, we're going to get a lot of these. You know, you never sit still at Manchester United. You always go for the next challenge. And I think that... This is Oli's Gola Solskjaer's biggest test yet because Sevilla are a very, very well um, informed and rehearsed side when it comes to the Europa League. They're a very good European footballing side. And if United want to go beyond just fighting for top four and they want to be in big competitions in Europe and go deep into them, then you've got to learn to deal with the continental style of football. And playing Chelsea and playing Man City and playing Liverpool and just you know parking the bus a bit and hitting them on the great breaks fine. But these, uh, you know, especially the Spanish sides, they're going to be very, very good on the ball. They're going to try and frustrate you. So if we can beat a team that's very good on the ball, who is, a, you know, a European side, it only adds more confidence. And it's a big test. You know, the manager, I'm not even going to pronounce his name, formerly the manager of uh, Spain, very short-lived uh, career at Real Madrid. Now he's at Sevilla. He's a good coach. And they're, they're a well-coached side. They will want the ball, like I said. But I feel that... It's an opportunity for Manchester United's better players. And look, I'm so glad we're not playing Wolves. Wolves would have parked the bus and hit us on the break and it would have been a crappy, boring game. Sevilla will leave the space. We've got to use the space. And I think Bruno and Pogba, especially important. And the front three have got to be potent when they get the when they get the opportunity to do it. But yeah, I'm confident we're going to win. I mean, what, what does everyone think in the comments? I really do think we're going to win. Um, apparently, Sancho didn't train with Dortmund today, says Woke. We'll talk about that in a minute. Please smash a like on the video. Um, also, um, we're not live at 8 o'clock tonight because I'm watching Barcelona versus Bayern Munich. If you want to join me for that, there is a watch along on That's Football. I've dropped the link in the video description for you. But yes, it's um, it's a massively exciting game. And I think we do get lost in all the transfer stuff. We definitely do. But this game against Sevilla in the Europa League, we win this and we're in a final. And, you know, so many other clubs, they're just checking the bloody, you know, whatever website it is for transfer news. And that's great that we do that. But we've got a massive game on Sunday, a massive game. And it's a and it's a really interesting game to watch as well because we're not playing some Premier League club. We're, we're playing a very well-seasoned um, European club and it will be a real test I slightly fear into Milan final not the, the team itself I've spent the last six months bantering their fans on Twitter they will come after me hard says Nick's P uh, Shakhtar United final 100% says United till I die well look the final will take care of itself in all honesty won't it the final will take care of itself we're looking at this semi-final by no means will it be easy it'll probably be one of our hardest games we've played in a long time because Sevilla are going to be one of the best footballing sides we've played in a long time but we've got to be brave enough to defend well and we've got to be brave enough to attack and that you know looking at the team on the left I don't think there's any surprises there I've put Romero in goal because I think he'll go with Romero personally I'd go with De Gea but I remember saying this with Mourinho when we got to the Europa League final before I'm if I've got a Ferrari and I've got a Vauxhall Astra on the drive, I'm going to go for the drive in the Ferrari. And I think Romero is a good goalkeeper, but he's not a Ferrari. Some people would disagree. I like De Gea. 
I think, you know, the business end of a tournament, you should play your best goalkeeper. But I respect the fact that Oli will probably go with Romero. wan and Williams are your fullbacks. I mean, what else are you going to do? Lindelof has got to play. I wouldn't trust Bailly, and I thought Lindelof played well when he came on. I wouldn't be bothering with Fred. I'd play Matic, Bruno and, and Pogba in the midfield three. And yeah, Rashford was very poor against Copenhagen. But what are you going to do? Are you going to play Lingard? Are you going to play Dan James? I mean, look, you go with what you've got. This is why we need squad depth. This is why we need Jadon Sancho. So the team sort of picks itself. You certainly don't... Th for me, you certainly don't start thinking about a Fred or a Scott McTominay or an Agarlo or an Eric Bailly in this sort of a game. You just don't. But, you know, that's my opinion. Can't wait to win this semi-final to get back for the United... Uh, the Champions League loss. This will be true football heritage, says Hamada. And Jesus Navas at right back. Spanish Ashley Young, says uh, Sam Holt. Yeah, look, I'm not... I don't... Severe on paper are never particularly a team that concerns you. Um, but they're a very, very good footballing side. And look, they finished fourth in the Liga and there are some good teams in that league beyond Barcelona and Real Madrid. And United, you know what? We cannot be arrogant to get about the Spanish clubs. I remember Atletico Bilbao all those years ago giving us a good run for the money. We've, we don't actually have a great record against Spanish clubs um, when it comes to European competition, uh, especially in recent years. So we've got to be careful. They will pass us about. But we have got the... We're in a situation now where you look at that last game against Sevilla. Fellaini started. I think he dropped Pogba. You know, Lukaku, Alexi Sanchez, Ashley Young, Chris Smalling. We're a different team now. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer... Look, I'd be, I'd, I'd be really disappointed if we played a back five because that's not what we want to be. That's not what we're evolving to be. Th that would be... A real concern if we played a back five. And I know Adam was talking about it and I know a few people were talking about it. But if you start playing a back five against Sevilla, what does that tell you about this manager who is um, is ingrained in the United way of risk-taking football? If he starts playing a back five, where's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got a back five from? I mean, where did this come from? Sir Alex never played a back five. I don't think he did it at Mulder or Cardiff. So where is he getting this back five from? He's only getting it from fear cowardice some would say I think that's a bit hard but fear what are you scared of severe for like they're going to be good on the ball but they're not actually that good up front and they do leave gaps at the back so just defend deep with the back four and hit them on the break that's the way to do it with all the spin around United and transfers I wouldn't be surprised if we're linked to Schneider again we must sign Sancho they have no choice says Vin Barra and uh, hi Mark do you think playing Pogba along with Matic gives us less legs in the midfield of the park Sevilla could overrun us in midfield says Shahan and Stefanovic posted some pictures of himself at Old Trafford on Twitter and Instagram a few minutes ago appears to confirm the transfer says Sean Hayes and welcome to the members club Arjit Tunga and uh, well you know Sean if that's true there are it, it, it does again it doesn't do these people who are close to the club I mean these people like Andy Mitten I would believe him when he said that this deal's not going to be done because this is a guy who I know for a fact has got very close links to the club. This is a guy who's asking pre questions in the press conference, every every bloody press conference. And he's come out and said, no, mate, I've been told it's not true. And then an hour later, Fabrizio Romano saying it is and the players posting pictures up. He's not the only one, by the way. Other people have said, not true. We've looked into it. It's not true. I know another fan channel's done that. You know, so... <laughs> What is true? You know, to me, I'd go with Romano. And if he's posting pictures, it is true. But it just shows you how information can be absolutely inaccurate and then be very accurate. It is a funny old world. I'm excited for this opportunity for this team to go up against the top European team. Appreciate Ollie's work looking at our team last time we played him, says Daniel Luciano. And Diab David Hare was an absolute beast in the first leg, 0 0 against Sevilla at Spain. Do you think he will play him, says Akil? I mean, David De Gea was brilliant that game over in Sevilla. Uh, absolutely see absolutely Danny Stulen says the weird thing is no other clubs are in the running for Sancho and Sancho wants to come to United and United can still get it done it's frustrating wishing you and the family all the best Danny thank you and uh, I wish you and your family all the best as well Bale is the one says Gorilla K okay. um, you know what Let's talk a little bit. I mean, look, if you've not watched the interview this afternoon that uh, Flex did with Simon Cooper, Simon Cooper's been around Manchester United for a very long time. Uh, I believe he used to be an MUTV uh, correspondent before he went to Sky Sports. But he is Sky Sports' lead correspondent in Manchester United. He's got a very close relationship with the club. He's very well liked. And he would know things that were going on around the club. Now, what he said on that interview, I mean, he, spent, he said a lot of things, but... He was asked about the Jadon Sancho thing. And the thing I took away from this was that, you know, when Manchester United really want a player, they very rarely not don't get them. And look, we can all be very critical of Manchester United. Of course we can. 
But we really did want Bruno in January, and we got him. We really did want Harry Maguire, and we got him. We really did want Juan Bissaka, and we got him. And a few years ago, we really did want Paul Pogba, and we got him. And I mentioned those four transfers because they're all very similar. The clubs we were buying from were putting stuff out there that we won't be taking for a ride. This is the fee that we want. With I think with every single one of them, there was a story United were going to walk away. Um, and ultimately, United ended up paying the price that the club wanted. So... I'm, you know, that's a totally different re reason why I'm confident. But, you know, James, uh, James Cooper, not Simon Kucher. I've just, I've just fused Simon Peach and James Cooper together, which considering they're both pretty much tier one, I've just created the best British transfer expert ever. ever. I don't know what Simon Cooper, Simon, <laughs> Simon James, Simon Cooper, James Peach, um, James of the Giant Peach. Um, it's all going wrong, but I don't know what Simon Peach and James Cooper think about that fusion, but I've just created the best UK journalist. He, we found a UK journalist that can go up against Fabrizio Romano and his name is same Simon Cooper. Anyway, back to reality. Um, anyway, but, but, but what I was going to say is that, um, look, what, what James Cooper said was quite positive about what, 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 about Jaden Sancho. Um, that United, you know, they, they, he is the priority. And um, I think there is a, everybody knows that. Um, so it just keeps going back to what I said last night, really, is that how do Man United walk away from this deal? How do, how do they come away from this deal with any um, saving grace? Now, now, the, the Fabrizio Cooper. The, the, the interesting thing um, about, um, about this is that, there is talk that Jaden Sancho didn't train today. Now, what Sky Sports are saying is if Manchester United... Look, if, if Dortmund close the door and say he's not going anywhere, which is what they're sort of saying, even though no one believes them, what Sky Sports are basically saying is if Manchester United pay the money that Dortmund wants, then Jaden Sancho will force the move because the money is there for Dortmund and he can say, you know what, why not letting me go? But what I really liked about what Simon Cooper said to Flex was that Dortmund have got to be a little bit careful here because their whole uh, their whole story at Dortmund is, we're a club, we're a stepping stone club. You come to our club, you produce, and then you go to a bigger club, and that's what we do. And the you know the players and the agents like that. So, if Jaden Sancho wants to come to Manchester United and a fair offer comes in, and Dortmund say we're not selling you, well they they're changing the whole model then, because any future player would go, hold on a minute, do do you want to go to Dortmund then? Because Dortmund sell themselves as this stepping stone club. When Bellingham goes there, he's going there because he knows he'll get first team football, he'll get Champions League football, and then in two or three years, he'll make a bigger move. And that's your path. But if Dortmund start you know, moving the goalposts a bit and saying, well, actually, although we've got a fair offer, we're not going to sell you now, that becomes a problem. So Dortmund have got to, you know, as James Cooper said, they've got to stay in line with what they're all about. Real Madrid is probably out of the race for Van der Beek. They're bringing Martin Odegaard back from loan one year early, out of money, says Patrick Farland. Hey, Mark, have you seen any highlights from the lad we signed from Partizan, says Jerome T. Green? I'm not really that bothered. I mean, if we're going to sign him, he's 17 years of age and he's going to go back on loan um, anyway for a year. So we can watch him then. Mark, you convinced me, Sancho. Why are we scared of Sevilla? Look at our attacking five. If they show up, no team can stop them. Uh, South Africa shout out Cape Town, says Ferdinand Williams. Big shout out. And Mark, what do you think about Fred playing left back instead of Williams? He's quick and our skill would be a good pair with Rashford, says Eric Palm. I, I don't think now's the time to start experiments like that. Uh, I, really, I really don't. Um, I, I, I don't think that would be a good idea. I mean, also what I found interesting about what uh, uh, James Cooper said was that, that you know, the, basically the Grealish deal looks highly unlikely um, at the fee that Aston Villa want. And even if, what he also said was, which makes total sense, is that even if the Sancho deal falls through, I can't see them then going spending £80 million on Jack Grealish because it's so close to what would actually get you uh, Jaden Sancho anyway. So effectively, the Jack Grealish deal, although I wouldn't say it's definitely over, I think the problem with the Jack Grealish deal, and only Jack Grealish can solve this, is the fee that that um, Aston Villa have now put on him. I think United were thinking £50 million quid, fine, but um, that is obviously not going to be enough. Uh, for Villa and I just think United would walk away from that uh, in total honesty but still the belief uh, and Simon Cooper had said this before James Cooper I'm going to get God where's my drink let's have some I don't know what this is but um, oh that smells nice and it is very strong Woo! take your head take your head off that Will um, the wife poured it I don't know what it is tastes a bit like sherry um 
Apparently the Barcelona lineup's not very good, according to United Cynical, and Bayern will blast them. So yes, um, two or three players still coming in, according to, according to James Cooper. So that that would be uh, that would be very interesting um, in that sense. Um, what's this story here? There's there's rumours that Jaden Sancho's handed in a transfer request. I don't. Look, I I would be very surprised if he did do that. I really would. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for him to do that at this juncture. But what I would say about the Dejan Stavanovic thing is that it's been uh, an hour now, pretty much, since uh, Fabrizio Romano. Um, or has he. Re uh, oh, no. Yeah, it's been 45 minutes since Fabrizio Romano said yes um, that the deal for Filip Stavanovic is done. He would, have been, he would have been informed by now if he'd made a mistake. So that is obviously something that is happening. Which is embarrassing for those people who said it's not happening. But there you go. Do your homework before you start putting stuff out. Thank God it's not Wolves, says Red Baron. And if Oli loses this, that's his third semi-final loss this season. Maybe that, that would be an interesting talking point, says Jerome Tigreen. Well, I did have that noted down. And, you know, I just didn't want to go down the, the negative route, really. But if he, did, if he did lose, it would be his third semi-final loss this season. Yeah. Will Oli be critically judged on his first season in the Champions League from the start? Will he be sacked if United get embarrassed? How damaging can this be mentally-wise? Or is there a bright side to regardless of results, says Forever PVM. I mean, look, I don't want to talk about the future because I think the future is bright and I think we're stepping in the right direction. And I think if you add Jaden Sancho to the players that we've got, we're only going to get better. But I would say this, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can't go and finish sixth next season and get embarrassed in the Champions League because he'll be gone. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the future of Manchester United. Most fans agree with that. I agree with that. Um, and, the, and the board definitely agree with that. But if he did start failing, I don't think he'd get another chance because he will have been here two years next season. And he's got to keep progressing now. I think the teething, teething problems were fine. Maybe he would have been sacked. Uh, maybe normal managers may have been sacked at Christmas. But, you know, they stuck with him. That perseverance has proven to be correct. And I, I just see United getting better and better. But, look, if it did fall off if it did fall off next season, I think everybody who said they didn't really believe he was the right man would be back again. So, you know, he's got he's got to succeed, and I think he will. What's interesting is Dortmund turn really down... Do Dortmund really turn down a big chunk of money in this climate? Whether it's £20 million or £10 million off, that first instalment is huge, says Nick P. Thank God it's not Wolves, says Red Baron. And if Oli plays this game like Jose did, I think we uh, we will be questioning Oli, says Red Baron. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the big thing. That is the big thing about this game. We can't go ultra-defensive. It's Sevilla. If we're going to go ultra-defensive against Sevilla with a back five, what are we going to do next year against PSG or a Juventus or a Real Madrid? You know, you've got to start playing in the United way. I don't think we respect... I don't think we need to respect Sevilla. N n well, no, that's wrong. I don't think we need to respect Sevilla any more than, yeah, we know you're a good team with a good history in the Europa League. But you know what? We fancy ourselves. We're backing ourselves. We're going to get on the ball and we're going to hurt you. And look, Bruno Fernandes is the sort of player that makes things happen. Paul Pogba is the sort of player that makes things happen. Happen. Do you think Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes want to be on a pitch against Sevilla getting behind the ball and sitting back? They don't. So we've got to be expansive. Lingard and Pereira are leaving, says Mohamed Ibrahim. I don't know whether Lingard's leaving, um, but I, I, you know, I would hope he is in the nicest possible way. I would hope he is. And I hope Pereira's going as well, because if we can remove two players like that, get a bit of money, free up two spots in the squad, you know, as James Cooper said, you know, and I really, this again was one of my favourite comments because it's something I said. Uh, Flex was talking about United being title challengers next season. And he said, you know what? I don't agree with that, Flex, because... I don't see United fighting for the title next year anyway. I think it's two years away. And I've always said that myself. Look, I'm not saying we can't win the title next year because Leicester won a title. But for me, even if we get Jadon Sancho, the expectation to win the title next year is what could cause us problems. You know, we don't want to be that club who just makes a few signings and thinks we're going to do it. I think we did that with Mourinho when we got Pogba and it didn't work out. Sancho will make us better, but he's got to settle in. This club still doesn't have a bench. So how can it win a title over 38 games? We are not ready to win a title next year. For me, it's about getting closer, as close as possible. And look, if by some miracle we win the title, that's great. But we've got to be closer next season. That's what we've got to be. Because we haven't got that squad depth. We, we, that's why we do, we do need two or three players. What about Sancho's wage demands that Cooper mentioned? You do think that's an obstacle? Love your channel first. Super chat, says Arjit. Well, look, I'm glad you reminded me of that as well, because... James Cooper did say that. He mentioned the wage demands of Jadon Sancho and said it's a bit odd, really, because if you become a Manchester United player, 
then you're going to make all the money you need anyway because you're going to be a superstar or the social media or the sponsorship deals and they will pay you well. Look, Rojo's on nearly 100k a week. Jesse Lingard's on 100k a week. Phil Jones is probably on about 70, 80 grand a week. You, you know, I think Luke Shaw's on around 150 grand a week. Matt is on 140 grand a week. You know, Man United play good wages. So, but the interesting thing about that is that is that not evidence of a of a leak from Manchester United to the British press that there is an issue with wages when Jaden Sancho's people have said that there isn't and when Fabrizio Romano and others have said that the wages and everything have already been agreed. So my, and look, I'm only guessing here, I'm not saying that James Cooper's wrong and I'm not saying that Fabrizio Romano's wrong, but one of them's wrong. One of them's saying wages are done and one of them's saying they're a stumbling block. For me, if I'm guessing, I would say the wages are not an issue, but United are looking for a way out. Because they have, if they're going to come out, they've got to find, they've got to find a way out of this deal that they fans can go, yeah, yeah, we won't do that. And what better way than saying that Sancho wanted silly wages? But I, having said that, I don't think Sancho's people will, will allow that to happen. United are stressing me out, says Knee, and uh, think it would be disrespectful by Man United not going aggressive. When Man United is my home country, the biggest dream to us is to see proper football. We are an international club, back at better actors once, says Andy So What GG. Welcome, well, welcome to Common Man, latest member of the United Stand Members Club. Um, Thanks for joining. Of course, all our content is free on YouTube, so we don't do Patreon or anything like that. So if you want to support the channel and also get a little badge next to your name, like some people do as a member, click the members button and join the club. Welcome to Vikas. He's just done that as well. Smutty's got a badge. Let's see who's got badges, actually. How many badges have we got in here? Smutty, uh, Daniel Luciano. Uh, the badge changes each month you're a member as well, all the way up to a platinum badge which is fantastic. Darth Vader's got a badge as well. There you go. Um, it's not an eight o'clock show tonight because I'm doing the Barcelona Brian Munich watch along. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be watching it. So you can join me for that. Links in the video description for that. Uh, eight o'clock. I'll be live just before that. I'm not putting words into Cooper's mouth. He's kind of saying what a United official would say. I think he is not questioning what has been told. It's the Panshu Kumar. Um, well, look, at the end of the day, Ben Mann, Henry Vargas, Ivan Scannell, all badgers. Loads of badgers in the live comments now. We're, we're full of badgers. Um, not the ones that live in a hole, but badgers in the United stand. Um, all different coloured badgers as well. Diversity Street on the badgers, which is great. We've got one monthers, two monthers, three monthers, go. Um, look, in fairness, if you're Simon Peach, James Cooper, Simon Stone, all these tier one journalists... And Manchester United have got your confidence and they give you information. Are you going to betray that confidence? It's their livelihood. So they're going to go with what Manchester United tell them. Of course they are. But there's definitely a difference in the story coming from the British press and coming from the international press like Romano and Christian Folk. So, you know, other than Shaw, we have not suffered many injuries since the restart. Do you think this is a look or a change in the medical department? Says Guy 23 I think it's a really good point. I think it's something we need to monitor. Um, I wouldn't call them heroes yet. You know, it's a bit like the transfer business we've been doing. We did good business last summer. We got Romana. We got uh, Fabrizio. No, we got Bruno. My words, in January, everyone could go, oh, yeah, we're great at transfers now. If we don't get Sancho, they're crap again. So medical injuries, yeah, we've had a good few weeks. But if we go and get three or four at the start of next season, they're crap again. Because it's got to be a continued thing. Should United experiment with left-footed Fred as a left-back? No, me here. I, I, don't, I don't like this sort of conversation. I think it's a little bit... Um, if I'm going to be blunt, I think it lacks football intelligence. But it's only my opinion and I'm not disrespecting yours. But the reason I say it lacks football intelligence because I think it's a little bit like FIFA. I think it's like, oh, I can grab Verratti and play him as a centre-back. Even though he's five foot four and he's definitely a midfielder. Oh, you know what? Fred can go and play at left back because he's left footed and tenacious. It's it disrespects high end football. Like these are positions on a football pitch where there have been greats of the game in them positions. Do you think like Roberto Carlos at left back? Do you think we could have just took, you know, a left footed uh, Rude Hullet if he's left footed and put him at left back? It's a specialist position. There's no way that Fred's a left back. He just hasn't got the body balance and speed to be a left back for me. And there's no way you could put Luke Shaw in centre defensive midfield or Aaron Wambasaka in centre defensive midfielder because they're very left-footed and right-footed players. And I think to be a CDM, you've got to have balance off both sides. Um, so, look, Luke Shaw did a great job as a left centre-back. Brandon Williams couldn't do it. Ashley Cole couldn't do it. Ben Chilwell couldn't do it. 
just because you're a left-footed player at left-back doesn't mean you can do centre-back. You've got to put respect on the positions. Um, it's not easy to go from one position to another position. I mean, look, it's not easy for Pogba to be a CDM, even though he plays very close to it. It wouldn't be easy for Matic to be a box-to-box -box player, even though he plays very close to it. Um, they could probably do a job, but these are specialist positions. Um, welcome to Vika. So we've done that. Um, other, yeah, we've done that. And welcome to Siddharth Bangari, latest member of the United Stand Members Club. So look, um, sorry for mixing my words up. I'm sure I'm going to mix a few more up on the watch along because I'm sipping on that and it's very strong. Do you reckon we are in for the baller again? No, Zach Jones. I do. I don't. It's too too much money. Too much money for United to do anything around that one. Um, but look, I'm going to be on the watch along for Barcelona versus Bayern. So make sure you join me for that. I'll be live in about 10 minutes. Links in the video description. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. You're all up to date. We've got a big preview on Sunday. Ollie's press conference is tomorrow evening, by the way. We will have a show in the morning, of course. When I play football, I played well at midfield. Tried right back and I could not get my head around it, says Red Baron. It's high-end football with a specialist position. I'll see you on the watch along in a few minutes' time. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll speak to you all in a bit.